Hi everybody, welcome back to Best Fit TV and Free Sports. I'm Alexandra Lugui. Let's get back to the mat. So we ended our first part uh, down in Balasana child's pose. So I want you to, um, hopefully you stayed there and you're quite comfortable. Come up to your uh, tabletop position, hands underneath your shoulders, fingers stretch nice and wide, knees underneath your hips. I want you to tuck the toes under and draw your body back as you push into the feet and lift your hips up towards the sky. Coming into Ardha Mukha Shavasana, downward facing dog. So you'll notice that my knees are really bent and this is much healthier than what I see so many people doing is thinking that they have to straighten into their legs and really rounding the spine because they don't have the flexibility. Don't feel any obligation to do that. Bend the knees. It's meant to be a spinal opening position, this, this downward facing dog. You're a, an upturned V-shape. What you can start doing is walking the dog where you just gently ease one leg down towards the ground, one heel down to the ground, and you bend the other one completely and switch it over. That will just start to work into the back of your leg. Ardo Mukha Shavasana. This is a really nice pose. Gradually, like I say, gradually, gradually, you'll be able to start straightening into the legs, but you don't want to compromise the spine at all. So don't watch me and think, must get to that immediately. Relax the head and neck. Eye focus is between the knees or the thighs. At some point, this will become a restorative pose. It might not feel like it right now, but it will. With time, with practice. Slowly walk your feet towards your hands, coming to the front of your mat. We're going to look at a uh, forward fold, Uttanasana. So my feet are hip distance apart. My knees are healthy and bent right now. Now I've got a block here in front of me and this is what you can do. Maybe a stack of books will be useful as well. This is an alternative to this, this hanging position, which is so bad for your lower back. And if those of you like me have got problems with uh, any discs, then you really don't want to be hanging out in that position. So take your books or your block, place your hands onto it, and you'll see then you can straighten into the legs without compromising your spine at all. Then you can relax your head and neck down, squeeze the tummy tight, flatten the back. Uttanasana is really good for improving your circulation. It's a really nice pose, gently stretching into the legs. And gradually then what you'll find is that you'll be able to take some books off, lower the, uh, the stack down a little more. You want to really keep the weight forward into the toes. Again, relax the head and neck. Gradually, gradually, this position will become easier and slowly you'll be able to place your hands down beside the feet and just draw the body together. But there is no rush. Stay on your block. I'd rather you stay there for extra long than uh, even try and push your spine. Wherever you're not at now, bend your knees and slowly unravel your body up to standing vertebrae by vertebrae. We're going to have a look at sun salutations, Saraya Namaskara. Sun salutations are probably the, the, the first flow that people would start to learn. Um, it's a really good way of strengthening and f uh, flexing and warming up your body in one go. It's a series of poses. So we're going to start just in Tadasana, mountain pose, which is feet together, shoulders up, back and down, palms facing forward. Draw your palms together into that prayer pose that we were in earlier on. This is called Anjali Mudra, Mudra of angels. And breathe. Now inhale, lift your arms up to the sky, draw the palms together again. We're going to, instead of doing a flat back, we're going to bend the knees and draw the palms down and come back to that forward fold, placing your hands back onto that block. I want you to really straighten into the spine, feel a lengthening from the hips into the head. And then as you exhale, you're going to bend the knees, place your hands down onto the floor and step your right foot all the way back, coming into a high lunge position. And then release that right knee down to the ground, coming into your low lunge. 
walk your hands up onto that knee. We're adding on a little bit because I just want you to get a nice stretch into the hips while we're here. You don't need to do anything here at all. We don't want this, that doesn't help you. Stay up and just squeeze, tilt the pelvis under and you will feel that stretch down that right hip flexor. Breathe, drop your shoulders, squeeze your tummy tight. If you wanna take it a little bit further, you could lift your arms up to the sky. Keep that right glute engaged. And then exhale, frame that left foot. Draw the left foot back to meet the right. And this time we're gonna effectively, I want you to imagine that you're going underneath a gate is the best way of explaining it. Squeeze your tummy tight. Lower your nose down towards the ground. Imagining you're going underneath the gate as your body comes forward, your chest comes down and then you lift your upper body off the ground, coming into what we call a cobra position. Stretching and strengthening into the spine, pull your shoulders away. And now tuck the toes under, push yourself back up to all fours. And slowly draw your hips back, making your way back to that downward dog. And then step the right foot through between the hands, manhandle it if you need to. Don't feel any shame in literally like plonking your foot down when you need it to go. And then step the left foot forward, come back to that forward fold. Stack is there waiting for, waiting for you. And slowly, slowly make your way up to standing. Left side. Inhale, lift the arms up to the sky. Draw the palms together, squeeze the tummy, squeeze the glutes as you sink down. Make your way back into that forward fold, hands onto the block or the books. Straightening into the legs, reach the spine forward, flattening the back and then exhale, forward fold. Bend the knees as much as you need to to place those hands down onto the mat and step your left foot all the way back, coming into the high lunge. Release the left knee down to the ground, coming up into your low lunge. Again, immediately, switch on. Just tilt that pelvis under, squeeze the left glute. You'll really feel the difference into this left hip, hip, left hip flexor. Let's put my teeth back in. So the lower body is locked. Option, inhale, lift the arms up to the sky. I focus and go up to the sky as well. If you want to take it a little bit further, keep squeezing that left glute. And then exhale, frame that right foot, draw the right leg back, ready for your ch well, Chaturanga Dandasana. We're doing it on our knees, lowering the nose, chin, chest, coming under that imaginary gate. Squeeze the elbows towards each other, pull the shoulders away from the ears into Cobra. Tuck the toes under, gently push yourself back to all fours and then slowly up to that downward dog position again. And then step the left foot through between the hands, placing it down. Remember, you can manhandle it there if you want to. And then step the right foot forward to meet the left, back to your forward fold. Relax the head and neck down. Breathe. Nicely done. And slowly, slowly make your way up to standing, vertebrae by vertebrae, lifting your shoulders up, back and down. Take an inhale, lift your arms up to the sky and then draw your palms down to center. And just take a few moments, look to your fingers, breathe. It's a really nice, flow that you can start with if you're new to yoga, Surya Namaskara, Sun Salutation. It's a good one to get going with. I really hope you've enjoyed today's session. I will see you next week. I really hope you have a healthy and safe week. Back to you, Faris. That was lovely. We always love our Wednesday yoga with Alex. And she'll be back next Wednesday because we're getting good at this now. So I think next week we're going to move up to intermediate level, I think, and we can all join in that. How about you guys? What do you do on a weekend to split your weekend up from your week? Because you're all into one. I'm going to find out now with Alex. Are you still there, Alex? I am indeed. Hiya. So we are guilty of kind of like these days are all blended into one. That's why we like having you Wednesday. We know it's Wednesday. But do you do anything on a weekend to split your week up from the weekend?
100% yes. I On Friday, I've already planned it. I'm having fish and chips this Friday and then I don't do any exercise over the weekend. So a fish and chip Friday sounds very northern that. Do you have some curry sauce on there? No. <laughs> you don't know what you're missing. So you're the person then that works really hard, exercise everything, healthy, Monday to Friday, so you let your hair down weekend, do you? Yeah, I'm going in, in this Friday. <laughs> in, in. So it's a takeaway Friday. Uh, what's Saturday on the store? Saturday, I do a house clean in the morning, which I hate, but it's actually quite good exercise. And then again, I won't really eat anything particularly good. Might do some Mexican on Saturday. Mexican, sounds tasty. And Sunday, is it a lazy Sunday or are you still active? Do you still do things? No, Sunday is very much lazy. I, but I do mentally start preparing myself for Monday. So I start like eating a little bit less and just getting my brain in gear for what happens. Yeah, I'm like that, a lazy Sunday, family stuff. But by Sunday night, I'm like, I'm itching to do stuff. So I write all my things down, get my list ready for Monday because smash it on Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly the same. Yeah. Well, brilliant. You enjoy your fish and chips this Friday, only two days to go. And um, have yourself a great rest of the week. We'll see you next Wednesday. Thank you very much. You have fun too. See ya. Bye. I suppose we better get ready for the day ahead then, but let's do it with a smile. Alice Law sets a timer to remind herself to smile. So let's try that today. I'll go for five minutes. That's going to get annoying though, isn't it? Here's the rest of the week's schedule. Stay home, stay safe, and I'll be waiting for you right here tomorrow.